What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Her Lounge podcast. We are back, like, not 100%, but we are back. If you, the episodes were a little weird last week, it's because my husband got confused as to what went up on what day. I think he gave y'all the Friday episode, but way before Friday. I'm not really sure what he did. I just know that somewhere along the lines, podcasts weren't delivered how they were or something. And we discovered that later because I said, hey, don't forget today my podcast goes up. He's like, what? I already did that. I said, why? I'm like, they're Wednesday and Friday. He's like, no, I don't think you recorded enough episodes. I'm like, no, yeah, I did. Like I recorded four episodes because I know that I would be out. So I think he said he gave them to them early. Oh, uh, well, hey, Merry Christmas in July. All right. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. All right, guys, you know, I like to start with a positive quote and it just goes a little something like this. As you get older, you really just want to be surrounded by good people, people that are good for you, good to you and good for the soul. Oh, man, that one that that is deep. Yeah, right. You just that's that's all you can do. Um, it's funny. My girlfriend sent me this uh, meme or whatever, and it said like she she can't do like needy friends right it's just like it's like um sometimes you, you can go like months without speaking to each other but it's just kind of like oh it was yesterday that I didn't speak to her you know what I'm saying because she's like basically saying like when you're really when you're friends with someone like you're really friends with someone even if a few months go by and y'all haven't talked but y'all maybe have liked each other's posts or make comments here and there send a meme or two to each other it's like still a form of like communication in some way or form you're just having sat there and like got on the phone and chatted for like hours you know what i'm saying or whatever it is um and it was funny because she and i use an app called marco polo have you ever heard of that i've heard of it i've never used it so basically it's like messages is all you're doing so it's like let's just say i wanted to tell her for example about my surgery right i'll just like tell her like blah 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 blah. get back to me whenever you it's like leave a message type of thing you leave a message however long you want to and then they get they watch it they play it back whenever they have time and then they'll respond whenever they have time it's basically how it is it's funny because it reminds me of like a is it like Snapchat? Mm, well, I don't think so. It's different. You know what it reminds me of? I'll be honest with you. Rob, were answering machines still around when you were growing up or were they done with? I didn't. I've never saw an answering machine in anybody's house. Oh, no shit. Okay. So an it, it reminds me of an answering machine. Basically, mm -hmm. somebody left you a message when you weren't home. And you played that bitch back whenever you had time or you played it back. You heard it. You're like, yeah, I'll get to them whenever I have time. Okay. Okay. I got gotcha. Is that not crazy? An uh, answering machine. It's a voicemail, but except without a machine. Dude, I didn't even think of that. I, no one ever had my parents, my grandparents, no tios, no tias. Nobody had an answering machine. Well, back in the days, <clears throat> they were, they, it got to the, I mean, I saw an actual answering machine, like, attached to the phone it was like connect a connection thing that you would put to the answering machine and you actually used to hit play on that bitch um but later on you know technology improves now they were built into your phone mm. and then that's when i think when we used to have home phones yeah that's when they started providing like voicemail and you would call in this thing on the phone and it would play messages that were left to you. Dude. It's so weird, right? Like forever ago. So forever ago. Um, I don't know what Penny asked me and it was so funny. She was like, well, what did you like? Basically, like, what did you do when you were little? Like, and I told her that we didn't have iPads. And so her question was like, I think like most kids, it's like, well, what did you do? Like, what? What did you do for technology? Because she's not one to, she she would prefer to be outside any day. It's just so hot. We can't yeah. be outside, you know? Um, but she was like, so what did you do? And I was like, so we had video games. I was like, 
you know, and I kind of showed her. And so I took her down, like I went, you know, I'm just sitting here. So I showed her on YouTube, like eighties and nineties stuff that we had. And she, while I thought she was going to say like, these are dumb or whatever. She was like, those are cool. Where, do, where can we get those? Mm-hmm. I said, no, we can't get that anymore. I said, you have, you have a better version of that now. I'm like, this is like, you know, it was, it was a badass version when I was growing up, but now it's like a uh, 5,000 times better. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, as I was showing her duck hunt, you mm-hmm. know, and so she was like, Oh, I want to play that. And I was like, well, there's way better versions of that now. Like you, they, as they have attachments that look like real guns probably now. Yeah. I said, so, you know, I'm like, this is not, this is for the birds. And so she was like, but she still thought they were cool, which I thought was kind of like cool that a little five-year-old still thought Heck yeah. things from that era are, you I, know. I think just because it's novel too. Like she's probably never seen her play them. She's like, ooh, I want that, right? Like it looks, yeah. I can mess things up. I can mess some things up with this, you know, toy Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. She, um, my mom got her a an amazing, um, which by the way, I didn't have that, so... Yeah, our parents definitely are giving the kids that are right kids right now way more than they ever gave their actual children, meaning us. I even asked my mom. I said, why didn't we get a swing set like this? She's like, y'all never asked for one. I'm like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? We asked for like a tree house. I don't know how many times. And I said, and dad said he would build it and he never did. It's like, well, I don't know. Well, your dad didn't build it. Like basically like, Get over Sorry. it. So, yeah. Get over, basically, yeah. So she got a swing set, like a legit badass wooden swing set. And um, bro, that's been the problem now. It's like if you want to go play in that, we have to we have to set an alarm. We get up at seven o'clock. She was up at 6 50 today asking if she could go and play in her in her house because it gets so hot. You oh. have to go out there oh, dude. that early in the morning for her mm-hmm. to get enough playtime before it's time to come inside. Or like eight o'clock at night because the sun's going down. It's still a hundred degrees, but the sun is down. You have like 45 minutes before it's dark. Bro, um, the bottom part of the house is really cool because it's got like those nets built in. Um, so to be honest with you, it's actually not that hot in there because it's got like openings on two ends and then the nets on this side. So it's not too bad in there, but we've discovered snakes. Oof. So that's where now we're like, damn, where are those coming from? You know how there's kind of, um, so people that live in the back of us. Mm -hmm. So they sit on like two or three acres. Right. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting how those houses were built back in the days before trendy houses like what we live in came in came in into motion, I guess. But they live on like 1.5 acres, two acres. I think the biggest one on that street is I think like almost four acres, and they take up like basically two house lots. But anyway, their house is so it's so much yard. Their house is in the very front of the other street right it's really interesting but i guess because it's nothing but i mean they have nothing but trees back there Mm. i don't know that's where the snakes are coming from Mm. and because we moved so much stuff because those the swing sets was coming in i think that's where Mm. i don't know and also they come exterminate every three months and i always feel like when they come exterminate through the outside it always brings up bugs that I've never seen in my life before. Yeah. That we Has just, that ever happened to y'all? Like, you're just was, like, dude, where did that bug say. come from? I've never even knew say. those existed, bro. Like yesterday we had some, we had treatment yesterday and you know, it's quarterly, right? So they do it every couple yeah, same. And uh, you know, they always say like, you're probably going to see a little more activity because we just, you know, uh, treated the inside and outside. Yeah. And the place that we're in, they have these things that like uh, the home builder incorporated as they were making these homes. And it's built into the outside of the wall so that the people never have to come in. They just treat it from the outside. Mm-hmm. Right? 
And so they do it on both sides and he did the garage or whatever. And as soon as he left, I was like, in, in the garage, you could almost see, I saw something just scurry, scurry outside while the garage door was open. I was like, I've never seen that before. That was like, <laughs> I, it, it's, it's clean. The garage is clean. I'm like, where did you come from? So yeah. sense, like what's in our walls, right? Yeah. It's kind of grossy Josie, to be honest with you. Cause like Super. I saw these other bugs in the, because they do like the little, you know how there's just a little small patio area mm -hmm. when you come in my door. Yeah. Basically just a little walkway. I was like, I, I opened the door and I was like, what is that bug? It almost looked like a tree, a piece of a tree. Have you seen those? Tree. Super thin. It looks like a little branch. Oh, I do know what you're talking about. What, what is that? I don't where, know what it's called. Where did that bug, it, what's his purpose? Uh, it probably eats flies or eats something like that or, or small spiders. <laughs> Oh my God. It was like pointless that I was like, I don't need, I had to take a picture of it, Rob. Like I had to go get my phone and take a picture of it. Cause I had no idea. I was like trying to find an app that could tell me what kind of bug that was. It's a phasmid. A phasmid. Yeah. Insects whose members of uh, variously known as stick insects, stick bugs, walking sticks. Yeah. They also occasionally refer to as the devil's darning needles. <laughs> what the I heard that um are they poisonous they do not bite sting or attack humans okay so what the fuck do they do interesting yeah i hadn't seen well, the funny thing time. well the funny thing is that yesterday sunny was watching peppa pig and uh the little boy whatever his name is peppa's brother mm -hmm. owned one of those as a pet weird and i said what the hell i just saw that bug for the first time in my life and now evidently this little boy has it as a pet it's hilarious anyway that's not real so yeah i don't know <sighs> what 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 that that struck a chord i mean i'm telling you because i've y'all this surgery i'm just going to tell you something right now and Rob, sorry that you have to hear this, but I would rather give a vaginal birth five times before I'd have another hysterectomy or an umbilical hernia. Rob, do you know that I, I'm antsy to, I, I can't wait till, um, which by the way, crazy thing. Um, I went to, you know, I, I'm not going to dog this, my, my umbilical surgeon yet. So I don't, I don't know for, for starters, this was the funniest thing ever. He is, he, he is Hispanic. He's Cuban. I don't want to say his name because if anybody out there listening works for him sure. and they kind of, you know, I don't know. But the funny thing is I get to surgery and they're, you know, everybody's coming in telling me what they're, 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 uh, role is and this person and this person um by OBGYN and him couldn't agree on a what is it called catheter right mm -hmm. she doesn't want it he wanted it and basically I guess she must be a bad bitch because everybody at that hospital was like yeah um I don't want to say her name either but you know, you know who it is. Yeah, um, you know, she's like, mm, yeah, so she doesn't like certain things. So we're not going to do it. Basically, like, whatever he says is going to cancel out. So whatever, you know, and so that, I thought that was funny. And uh, I guess her reasoning is you can't go home unless you pee, mm -hmm. right, or whatever. And so I guess when they use that, it makes it harder for you to go to the restroom after. Mm -hmm. And also, Something about it could also cause like other issues. I don't know what what it is, but um, anyway, so that's one thing they couldn't agree on. Then the other thing was so funny. So they come in and they're like, we can't get started on the surgery until you see each surgeon. And I was like, OK, so my OBGYN comes in. She's like, you know why we're here today, right? I was like, yes. And we kind of talked just like this was the solution to what we had already talked about. So, you know, but you'll be fine. She's like, you'll be fine. You'll be so happy you did it. She's like, um, you know, and we'll get started here soon. And I was like, okay, 
okay, so the umbilical surgeon, I guess, wanted for my stomach to be put asleep. Like, I guess, almost like how they do a C-section. Because when they do a C-section, um, she'll come in and she gives you whatever. And she'll start touching your belly. And she's like, can you feel this? Can you feel this? And I've said, no, I'll say no. And that's how they know they're ready to cut open, basically. So I had one anesthesiologist come in and tell me we were going to do a, a middle. I don't even know what it was called, something. And I was like, okay. Well, then the other anesthesiologist comes in. He's like, all right, so are you allergic to anything? I'm like, no, but they told me they were going to take me to something else. So what's going on? It's like, no, doctor, my OBGYN, again, mm -hmm. does not like that. And I was like, okay, y'all. I literally said this. I said, I have not eaten. I said, but most importantly, I haven't had coffee today. I said, so I'm getting really confused. I said, y'all probably should talk about it amongst y'all. I said, because somebody else came in and gave me different information. And now you're coming and giving me something else. I said, so. And he just goes, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And he walks out. And my mom's like, uh, don't be so rude. I'm like, I'm not being rude. I'm like, I ain't had no coffee. First of all, I said, and second of all, I said, I'm not, I'm the patient. Like you coming in here telling me when I'm, someone else just came and told me something else. The one's like, that's how it is. And you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, whatever. Anyway, I didn't get that because my OBGYN said no. Okay. Okay. Um, but pretty much I got, the, I got the anesthesia and I was like, peace out. I don't even know what happened. I woke up and I was done. I saw my mom sitting in the same chair. She was when I was, you know what I'm saying? Right before I went into surgery, I was like, what? But my point to all that was, they said, you have to see your surgeons before we can take you to the back. And I said, okay. With OR, I said, okay. So I saw my LBGYN and the nurse that was helping me, she goes, well, your OBGYN is always really early. Like she's usually here at least 15 minutes before surgery. So we'll be good there. She's like, um, your umbilical surgeon. <laughs> Sometimes, most of the times he's running at least 15 minutes late. It's funny. Once 15 minutes before, once 15 minutes late. But he, I couldn't help but to say to myself, is it because he's Hispanic? Because he's Hispanic, you know what I'm saying? Another kind of time. And I was like, oh, he's on that time. I get it. So one, I never saw him before I had surgery. I didn't see him after. I went to my follow-up. I still didn't see him, bro. What? That's what I said. And and RPCP referred me to him. That's hilarious. I know. And so I was like, okay, I've, I, I mean, I've met him initially the first time I went to him. Okay to evaluate me but then after that I, I've not seen him so anyway I go to my follow-up and guys if this is boring to y'all go ahead and tune, tune out but if you're somebody that's considering it I would say keep listening um basically um it's going to be five weeks of recovery legit five weeks like bitch don't do nothing quit trying to make yourself try to do whatever uh five weeks of recovery and then after that, basically, it's like test the waters type of thing. Definitely, definitely nothing more than 20 pounds. After five weeks, after eight weeks, you can try to go a little bit more. In my mind, all I keep thinking is like, wait, so when does weightlifting, when can that happen for me? About January 2024, probably. Mm -hmm. Basically, he said, he's like, what kind of weightlifting? Like, I, I think he was probably thinking like, oh, you're just going to go do like for toning. You should be fine. Just don't lift anything more than 20 pounds. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, like, I want to lift weights. And I was like, I used to do bodybuilding. I said, and I'd like to be able to give back addition. He's like, no, he's like, that's going to be like, he's like, if you want a legit recovery, he's like, this is the assistant. Mm -hmm. At that point, I want to be like, well, I want to talk to the doctor. Because I want to the know manager doctor right exactly. now. Exactly. I'm like, because I need to know this girl. Basically, he said, Rob, and then that's when it crushed my heart. You know, like on the on sitcoms when it's like, Dun, 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 dun. that's exactly what happened he said about six months before he would recommend 
me trying to even get to that level. Um, he said, most people try to do a whole year before they even go past. Like he, she's like, you'll have, he said, you'll have to test your body. He's like, but most people take six months to a year before they go back to like lifting weights, like how they were doing before. He's like riding a bike, running, you know what I'm saying? Walking on a treadmill, going for a walk, like anything like that. He's like even lifting weights, but just not, mm -hmm. not over 20 pounds. Right. He's like, um, you know, he's like, that's what people do the first six months to a year, which I can see would make sense because Sean, who is my friend and, and was my, my trainer, he had the same surgery, right? And he said it was the most painful surgery he's ever had, right? And when he told me that, I was like, what? Come on now. I guess you're a guy. That's why you're saying that, right? right. But his busted again, bro. Oof. So he's got a hernia again. And he said he's not going back to fix it. He's like, fuck that. I just, it's going to stay like that. I just can't lift. I, he just won't do no, he doesn't do any ab work anymore. So he does no ab work, no nothing. He's like, I just get my ab work from squatting, like, you know, using my abs, like in other type of, you know, movements. He's like, but I just don't do it. He's like, I just won't. I just won't. Damn. And I was like, bro, if this hernia happened again, I feel him. I would not get it fixed again. I would not. And when I talked to, when I talked to my OBGYN, she said, she goes, how are you doing with pain? I said, I'm in a lot of pain. She goes, oh, that's not me. That's your hernia. She's like, that's your, that's the, she said, actually, she said, that's the mesh. So I guess the mesh that they put, which is, I guess, where they take the hernia out, it's trying to grow with your skin. And so that's where a lot of the pain comes from. So, and that's where I'm at with my surgery, Rob. So, um, Man. You, and you know, you know how there always has to be that one person Oh, I sent a man. shout out. Exactly. I sent a shout out to, um, you know, the patrons. Thank you guys so much for sending me flowers, Marissa, for dropping off fruit. I really appreciate everyone's love and support while I've been, while I've been down. Um, but somebody DM'd and said, oh, did you also get like, did you also get snatched? And I said, no, I fucking got a hernia repair. And a freaking hysterectomy, bro. I would not be able to take no snatching on top of this. I, I I told my mom that too. I was telling you before. I was like, okay, I said that I would remove skin, but I have got to get this pain out of my brain for a while. Almost like having children, right? You're like, fuck that. I'm never having kids again. That was so painful, right? And then like out of nowhere, you like, forget about how painful it was and you get pregnant again right so almost like that I need I need for this pain to be like literally forgotten not even a little bit remembered at all before I'd even considered a well I guess in my case it would be a tummy tuck if you got skin removed right whatever and I guess they do lipo with it too whatever but I told my mom I was like oh I'm, I'm gonna have to do everything else to try to get this skin to get back to some a little bit normal and if it does get back to a little bit normal that's how it's gonna stay boo boo because bro we use our abs for so much we don't even realize it you use your I mean we were talking and I told you okay Rob I can't sit up this long you're gonna have to wait for <laughs> me to go put my belly binder on and I went to go do it and I came back yeah, so I, I was gonna I'd muscle be. through. You were gonna muscle through. I was like, you, you can even tell your posture. Obviously, it was just like slunched up. I was like, this isn't gonna work for an hour. Yeah, you said you're like, are you sure? And I'm like, no, yeah, I'll be fine. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna be fine. So I need something to support me. But um, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, this surgery is not for the week. Maybe, maybe if I would have had them separate, I don't know, because I don't know which. One my OBGYN says that it's not my, it's not the, the, the hysterectomy. That was the most painful. She said it was the umbilical repair. That was the most painful, wow. but I don't know because I got them done both at the same time. So I don't know which one it is. Most of my pain is in my belly button, 
So in that area, so I'm assuming probably so, because everything else just kind of, and my stomach is purple, y'all. Yikes. It is purple. And I got these random cuts. I guess that's where they stick the little cameras in there. Like, y'all could have gotten a little bit creative with the cuts. Like, can y'all have done them like evenly? You know what I'm saying? So I don't just OCD have these random just be driving you crazy. I mean, yeah, I look at them like, what was that cut for? Do you know that they take the uterus out through the belly button? No, I don't know that. I'm over here trying I, to like keep my shit together because I'm like squirming from your story. Oh my, oh my God. Yes, I didn't know that. I asked our, our, my OBGYN, I said. Yo, you asked our OBGYN. Yeah, I was going to say our, but our. it's not, it's, well, you're with Don, so it is yeah, our. It is, sure. um, yes, so um, what did our OB say? Yeah. Um, so when I asked her, because it was as uh, laparoscopic, I thought to myself, okay are you burning that bitch like what are you doing if you're just sticking in something to i don't i didn't understand just oh yeah we just take it out through your belly button i said what the fuck did you just say oh god what did you just say bro did you just tell me i was like how big is a uterus because i just figured like this sack just coming out of like i was tripping i was tripping that they get that out of the belly button i i was just like okay that's an interesting and I okay and then I went down rabbit holes of like how to heal from you know the best the fat you know me it's what's the fastest way I can heal from from this because I want to be mobile right and so I'm like I'm on there going on there looking like recovery well one no one ever told me about the belly binder thing but I guess that would make sense because it's kind of like a c-section but they didn't give me one at the hospital so I had no idea that I was supposed to have one right that came from watching TikToks, by the way. Mm. And so I was like, okay, like it was like tips on how to recover from a hysterectomy. So I'm like, okay, I look. But then, Rob, I got, of course, you go into the ones that are crazy. I kept my ovaries. So my ovaries have not been taken out, right? So I should go through menopause normal, like, you know, every other woman, according to how according to the type of I had a partial hysterectomy but this lady got on there saying that all of a sudden she started having thoughts of committing suicide after having a partial hysterectomy hmm. and I said what the fuck and I was like oh my god what is going on so now what I go down doing? yeah and I was like what she's like I was nor basically I was normal before she was like, you know, yes, I had really heavy periods, but if I could, if I could take it all back, I'd rather have my heavy periods over these crazy emotional roller coasters that I go through now after having a hysterectomy, because I guess your hormones go whack afterwards. And she had to go to therapy and she was doing all kind of shit because she was going to commit suicide. I was like, what in heaven's name did I just watch now? I'm like, I can't believe this. Now, there's some people that say their hormones are all over the place. And then there's other people that are like, this is the best shit I ever got done. I should have done this sooner. Like, I'll, I do not regret this. And and I and it's funny I, when my sister came over, I told her about it. She goes, "Yeah, that's why they say after you do anything, you shouldn't go on WebMD, you shouldn't go on social media." I was like, "Well, you know how they have tips. I would like to give somebody tips on about this, right?" And my tip would be, "Don't do this together." <laughs> <laughs> don't do it together, and you know what? Maybe don't do it at all. How about that? Alyssa, don't do this together. Own- Maybe do them separate if you have to do this do this separate I know I told Don this I'm like I know I'm gonna be happy I did it like when I recover when I'm one when I'm better I'm like oh my god I'm so glad I got both of these done at the same time you know what I'm saying but right now bro for right the birds. now for the birds right now I would have preferred to have done one and then the other one but then that'd be two different surgeries, two different healing, going through this again. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's fine whatever it is what it is um but it was crazy there's a whole group of people on on it's more on tiktok i didn't really find much on on um instagram it was more on tiktok where i was like finding stuff about hysterectomies and that's where i found out about wearing the the belly binders and i told yo i caved in and bought went to target the dude i have a story about that too perfect timing actually we're 30 minutes in we're only doing an hour because there's no way soul can stand or sit here for two i can't hours. sit up that long guys sorry so half the this is the first part for the uh public episode and then we're going to do the premium episode for the next 30 minutes so if you want the full hour you got to be a patron sign up her lounge podcast <laughs> on patreon you can find it easily or patreon.com forward slash her lounge podcast and don't forget you can do a trial now Yep, you can do a free seven day trial and tr check it out. Get the free content. Jump with the Patreon and the Discord, and then if you don't stay there, you just get booted. And you get booted. And then also, dang, I don't remember the newest member that just joined, but shout out to her. Um, we were unprepared to shout out patrons. I'm sorry, I forgot. Listen, y'all, I've been on pain meds, so. Uh, I think, I think but I did giving you the excuse. It's okay. Give me, give me a, give me some time here to remember. I don't remember her name, but she's new. Now we're going so to welcome to the twice. Discord. You're going to, mention her huh? twice. You're going to mention her twice next week because of this. Yes, I'm going to mention her twice. I'm going to go on there and say and look up her name. Um, but uh, welcome to the Discord. This that's really my point of that whole story. Um, so if you're not on there, come join us, guys. Um, and uh, we're a little family. And I already told y'all, I'm serious. I'm cutting it off at 50 people. Because I think that's those are the true the true VIPs um, right now. We're almost there though, Rob. I'm actually gonna as you were talking, we're I'm not... trying to rush my way to the Patreon here so I can get the name. Um, I think we're at what's her name? The newest person. We are at thirty four, by the way. Oh shit! So we had some drop offs. Let's see. Uh, where can I see it? Give me a second. Give me a second. I can't find that on the notification page. Actually, a okay. lot of notifications because I typically don't log into the Patreon for her lounge unless I'm posting uh, content. But we will mention you twice next week. There you go. Uh, so 